Tonight, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio trying to make things right with the city's police unions. They meet behind closed doors following a series of protests across the city, including silent protests by police against de Blasio. Our temperature is finally beginning to cool. Also in battle, Staten Island Congressman Michael Grimm resigning from office after pleading guilty to federal tax evasion charges. And the guy who might just be next in line for the job has a direct connection to the Eric Garner grand jury decision. Plus, more bad news for New York's Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver. Now the feds are investigating payments he got but allegedly did not disclose. How much Shelley is too much for Assembly Democrats? Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman. Richard French has the night off. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin tonight in New York City where Mayor Bill de Blasio is attempting to clear the air with the police. Today de Blasio met privately with police unions. The closed door meeting comes amid a series of protests across the city including protests by members of the police department Saturday during a funeral for Officer Rafael Ramos. NYPD officers turned their backs on de Blasio as he delivered his speech. It's a move we saw them do a week earlier when Ramos and his partner Wen Jin Liu were rushed to a local hospital after they were fatally shot and ambushed by a gunman. The mayor was also heckled during a police academy graduation ceremony on Monday. Our Dominic Carter joins us now live from the Police Academy in Queens with the latest on today's meeting. Good evening, Dominic. And good evening to you, Andrew. Amid bitter tensions, both sides met today for some two and a half hours. And we'll let you hear the reaction and you can gauge for yourself on whether or not there's been progress. As it relates to PBA President Pat Lynch uh, stepping out forward amongst the union leaders that were here, Mr. Lynch says, Andrew, there's been no resolve and, quote, actions speak louder than words. As far as the mayor tonight, his office released a statement saying this is about productive dialogue and moving forward together. Whether or not all of this will work, only time will tell. PBA President Pat Lynch emerged from the two and a half hour meeting with only a brief statement. There were a number of discussions, especially about the safety issues that our members face. There was no resolve. And our thought here today is that action speak louder than words and time will tell. Lynch did not take any questions. The mayor first left from the closed door session, driving away without comment. It has been a rough few weeks. Lynch had accused de Blasio of having blood on his hands. And at the funeral of Officer Ramos, outside while the mayor was speaking, some officers turned their back to him. Then this week, the mayor received some booze at a graduation for new officers. Andrew, it's worth noting each side is trying to, if you will, lower the temperature. The mayor arrived here on time uh, for this 2 o'clock meeting. In fact, he was a few minutes early, Andrew, but he didn't arrive in the front of this police academy in Queens. He came in in the back where there were very few cameras and very few still photographers. The PBA, for their part, as I just mentioned, when they came literally to this location to comment, they made a very brief statement, that coming from Pat Lynch, and it's rare and odd, but they did not, as they normally do, did not take a single question from reporters. In fact, they walked off after Mr. Lynch was done with his statement. That is the very latest from here in Queens. And also, we should point out that the police commissioner, Bill Bratton, was apparently inside, but he did not come out and talk to reporters. Reporting from Queens, I'm Dominic Carter. Andrew, let's go back to you. Dominic, I know Pat Lynch didn't take any questions as he was talking to you and the other reporters there. He said that actions speak louder than words. Do we have any idea what kind of actions he's seeking from Mayor de Blasio? I'm glad you asked that question. Specifically, Mr. Lynch referred to safety for his officers. They feel that the mayor has set a climate 
We're in this city, in New York City, where officer safety uh, is of great concern to you, members of the union, especially considering the horrible incident that happened with the two heroic officers. And in fact, one funeral still remains. Uh, so they didn't go into a lot of uh, elaborate explanations, if you will, when I say they, meaning the police unions. In fact, we didn't even hear from uh, Ed Mullins of the Sergeant's Benevolent Association or any of the other union leaders. All we can tell you is Mr. Lynch said that they one of their major issues, as of all that has been the fallout of this, is safety of the police officers out on the street. We do know, based on published reports, that their productivity, that is, of the NYPD, is down drastically in the wake of all of this that's happening. Uh, the bottom line here, Andrew, the mayor has to get control of the situation. We will see what he has to say tomorrow, but he left here in his vehicles without comment and uh, apparently went back down to City Hall, Andrew. And we'll get to that arrest report in just a little bit. Dominic Carter reporting live in Queens tonight. Dominic, thanks very much. I want to bring in tonight's panel now. We're joined by Bob Castelli. He's a former Republican member of the New York State Assembly who represented New York's 93rd Assembly District for two terms before that longtime New York State police officer. J. Gary Pretlow is a Democratic Assemblyman from Mount Vernon. He's also the chairman on the Assembly Committee on Racing and Wagering. Thank you for being with us. And Jonathan Yedden is here, a Democratic consultant with the Advance Group and a former executive director for the Kings County Democratic Party. Uh, Assemblyman Castelli, let me start with you as a longtime former cop. If you're a Pat Lynch or if you're one of the police unions, what are you saying to Bill de Blasio tonight? And is your focus on trying to cool temperatures or trying to get the mayor more to your side of the, of the table on all this? Well, I think first you have to get tempers cooled down. But I think the, the real position is to try and get the mayor to reconcile differences that were predicated by some of his actions, some of his words, you know, in lieu of some of the recent incidents that took place, you know, both in New York um, out in, in Missouri, and to come to the table and affirmatively admit that he is going to support the PD, uh, support them to the extent that he wants their morale to be higher, and do so by action rather than just word. Assemblyman, Pre Pre Assemblyman Pretlow, what would you suggest to the mayor to say to the police unions who are at this meeting? Well, I personally don't see what the mayor has done to offend them so much. I mean, uh, Mr. Lynch has always been a very incendiary uh, individual, and, and I understand he's supporting his men, and he has their back, and I, and I have to you know, agree with him on having his members back. But this got ramped up, I think, inappropriately. It shouldn't have gotten to the point that it is now. You always have to respect an office, and, you know, the police department has totally disrespected the office of mayor by turning their backs on him, by booing him at a graduation um, ceremony. I mean, these guys weren't even cops yet. They just graduated and becoming cops, and they're booing him as though he did something to them. I think in the back of all of this, there's contract issues going on, mm -hmm. and, and that's what's really happening here. And so I, I just think that tempers do have to cool down. Um, the um, police union and the mayor do have to sit down and talk. And I do think, though, that the NYPD has to respect the, at least the office of mayor. Jonathan, the unions are going to have an agenda, which is, you know, protecting the best interests of their officers, whether that's financial safety or whatever the case may be. In large measure, this is going to fall on the mayor to try to figure out at least a workable path forward. How does Mayor de Blasio get out from under all this? He's going to have to concede, I believe, to the police and the unions at this point with respect to negotiations. Uh, I, I, he's done a, a bad job dealing with the press during his first year in office. and. The police unions are using that to, to, as leverage with respect to the negotiations and the back and forth taking place. Nobody could predict, you know, the, the, the horrific events that took place over the past um, year. But all of it comes down to leverage negotiations, who has it, who doesn't have it, where the mayor is standing in the polls among specific groups and whatnot. And as the mayor's poll, poll numbers continue to dip, it just provides the, the police, the unions, the members and all just a greater hand and a greater, more leverage. A, a lot of where the, the, where the mayor and the, the unions fall is being played out in, in the court of public opinion and, and how their sides are being represented. And I want to get into the report that Dominic referenced, which is a new report that shows a severe drop in the number of arrests made by the NYPD following the deaths of officers Rafael Ramos and Wenjian Liu. 
The Post reports traffic tickets have dropped 94 percent, parking tickets down 92 percent, tickets for low-level offenses like public drinking are also down 94 percent, drug arrests by the Organized Crime Control Bureau have dropped by 84 percent, and overall arrests are down 66 percent. Now this is just in the week that began on December 22nd. And a couple of thoughts came to my mind today. The first is, if they're not careful, the NYPD may be making the argument that the broken windows policy is less necessary than they've been implying that it is for the last couple of years. If there's a significant drop in quality of life arrests and it doesn't seem to be degrading the quality of life in the city, it's kind of making the point against them that they want to make. But mm. the other thought that came to my mind is that this also speaks to what's one of the issues at the heart of all of these protests we've seen following the Garner decision, which is that police officers do not get to selectively enforce the law. They do not get to pick which laws they enforce, and they don't get to pick against whom they enforce them. And if they're just going to simply turn their backs on quality of life arrests, isn't that the same as singling out one group of New Yorkers as opposed to another group of New Yorkers? And, and uh, I'll start with you, Assemblyman. I, your, your thoughts? Well, in the past, that is what's happened. Um, policemen were generally um, in control of the lives of many individuals. They can arrest you for doing a minor crime and ruin your life forever or arrest you for doing a minor crime and take you home and nothing ever happens. Um, the police have in the past selectively enforced certain laws in certain areas and if you look at the old stop and frisk laws, the percentage of people where the stop and frisk took place, who was being stopped and what they were being arrested for. Um, you know, someone that gets that's stopped for no reason and found with a a, a marijuana roach in their pocket, arrest, arrested for, for a possession of a controlled substance, where a former colleague of ours, I'll, I won't mention his name, but we all know who he is, was arrest, arrested driving with marijuana and just given a, a summons, which should have happened to that same young man that might have been stopped in Frist in Brooklyn, but he went to jail, whereas other people get to go on uh, uh, with their lives. Um, if the law is the law, it should be enforced equally, and unfortunately that hasn't happened in the past. Now, now let, me, let me address some of that. Please. Um, and, and I don't disagree with Gary. There, there has been times we've seen selective enforcement of the law. Sometimes a police officer using his discretion is a good thing. Mm -hmm. We don't want police officers to be mindless automatrons. For instance, we don't want someone giving you a ticket for doing 56 and 55 when speedometer error is usually four or five miles per hour. Sure. So we want to have a certain discretionary capability with our police. And to the point, Police officers are granted by we the people a higher level of authority, and that begets both a higher level of responsibility and accountability, as it should be. Now, to go back to what you were saying, when we look at a situation like the, the, our former colleague and other people <laughs> like that, it's important to remember the police can arrest you for everything, but can't convict you of anything. It requires a court of law, a, a jury of 12, and a judge to make those determinations. So as was the case with our former colleague, uh, he was given an adjournment in contemplation of dismissal, and the charge was reduced. But that's pretty much a common reduction for anybody getting you know, arrested for DWI or DWAI, driving while ability impaired by drugs but, in New York. But the slowdown in quality of mm -hmm. life, I mean, that just, I, I mean it, it just feels like a garbage move. Uh, and I hate to say that, uh, but to, to simply walk away from those as a protest yeah, uh, and, and you know what, I, I, let me just say this to you. Having done this for 21 years in the state police, having taught it for 15 years at John Jay College, I'm not in agreement with that type of an action. I think what you will see is at some point this will grow exponentially, and when you walk away from those quality of life crimes, you'll start to see quality of life crimes start to expand. Yeah. And, and so you may be doing the wrong thing for the right reason, the right reason being trying to send a message to the mayor, but the wrong thing being not enforcing laws that they would heretofore always be enforcing. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a rough balance there. They have no means of protest, as you know. The tail law does not allow them to strike or anything else. And by the way, they shouldn't be allowed to strike. Uh, but in this case, it's their method of saying, you have offended us for whatever reason whatsoever, whether it's legit or otherwise, and this is our way of protesting that action. I take issue with one thing. While you're protesting it against the mayor, the rest of the citizens of the, of the city of New York may suffer. A and that's where I don't agree with that. And, and with those numbers that we're hearing, these 80s and 90 percent reductions, that sounds like a job action. It certainly and does. And even right? though they say it's not a job action, I think it is, and that's illegal. So now they're breaking the law, 
by, by doing a job actually, a 90% decrease in a short period of time is, is huge. And it just looks terrible. I'm sure you all saw the editorial in the Times today where they, they talked about the unions, the snarling sense of victimhood, uh, the belief that the department is never wrong, that it never needs redirection or reform, only reverence. The cops are an ethically impeccable force with their own priorities and codes of behavior accountable only to themselves and whose reflexive defiance in the face of valid criticism is somehow normal. I would argue that the, that the, the PBA is doing more to harm the standing of police in New York right now than anything that the mayor has said. I, I'll just go around the, the uh, I mean, table they, they for reaction, They could be overplaying John. their hand. Again, the, the mayor's unpopularity dips weekly, at the, you know, monthly at this rate, and so they might be overplaying their hand. They feel as if they have public support behind them, and so they might be overplaying their hand, no question about it. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a massive agency. It's, you know, every president comes in, Democrat, Republican, and thinks they're going to do something and cut and, and reform government and the Defense Department, this and that, but it's a lot easier said than done. Reforms needed to be made at the police department. They brought in a, a, a guy who had been there before before that de Blasio needed to show the police that, they, that he was serious about this. And I, I guess, you know, the wheels are starting to come off the bus a little bit with Bratton and how he's fitting into all this. And so, you know, again, they might be overplaying the leverage that they, they believe they have. But I ultimately, I mean, the PBA is, does have a strong footing with respect to heading uh, with these negotiations, as long as they don't shoot themselves in the foot by doing things that are overly political just for the sake of, uh, you know, a contract. Assemblyman Bartlow, did you agree or disagree with the Times editorial today? Um, I didn't get a chance okay. to read the Times editorial, but I think this is all theatrics. And I, I believe that the, uh, the PBA is overplaying its hand in this sense. So, you know, the, the, the people, is, as I know, always want to be behind the police because we all look for the police for protection. And when we start feeling that the police are not on our side, are not our friends, then bad things happen. It was not what we want. Um, I, I think that you know, tempers have to come down um, rapidly, not slowly, they have to come down rapidly. And the city of New York has to remain a safe city. It's been getting safer and safer over the years, and that seems to be going away now. You know, I, I got to take issue with the Times on this one, and, and I respect the Times, but I don't think that that is in general characterization of the beliefs of most police officers. You know, you've got a police department with 42,000 sworn members, larger than the standing army of most third world nations. And there are going to be bad cops in there. There are going to be fabulous cops in there. The vast majority of them are going to be on the good side of that. And, and I think to turn around and to categorize them and paint them with the same broad brush does them a disservice and further creates the divide. You know, and that's not what we need. And I agree with Gary. It needs to come down quickly. And, and however it comes down, probably behind closed door, better than, than hashed out in a newspaper in a court of public opinion but it needs to be brought down. But at some point in time, what we do recognize is the morale of this department has been, for right or wrong, damaged. Now, you've got one of the most popular police commissioners we've ever had in 50 years there, and, and I would like to think that he can take the reins there and get everybody on the same sheet of music, and, and that's my hope. And turning down the temperature in New York is still the theme of our online question. Head over to Facebook or head over to Twitter and give your thoughts on how both sides can help turn down the temperature in New York City. Up next, embattled Congressman Michael Grimm says he's resigning from his post after pleading guilty to tax evasion charges. So now what's next and who will fill his seat? We'll get into that next.